The film begins in 1967 in Paris, with chess prodigy Beth Harmon waking up in her hotel room. She had overindulged the night before and passed out in the bath. She recalls that today is her big day to compete against a man, so she rushes downstairs. Beth maintains her cool as she walks to the hotel lobby, despite paparazzi flashing cameras in her face. After some time, she approaches her opponent, and the two prepare to play. We get a glimpse of Beth's past as she looks the man in the eyes. We see a nine-year-old Beth surviving a horrific car accident on a bridge and a flashback. Her mother, however, died that day. Beth is now an orphan because her father abandoned her a long time ago. She is taken to an orphanage, where she is shown around by the warden. She also encourages the young girl to have faith and keep moving forward in life. Later, Beth is told to stand in a line with other students who are waiting for their turn to receive vitamin pills. She befriends a student named Jolene, with whom she has a brief conversation. Beth immediately feels spaced out after taking the pills. She even has trouble walking around. Jolene notices this and informs her that she must wait until night to consume the vitamins. Beth is sent to the basement the next day during class to clean some board dusters. She becomes intrigued when she notices a janitor named Mr. Shable playing chess. Beth looks at him for a moment before heading upstairs. While the students are in line to get their vitamins that evening, Jolene shows Beth how to hide the pills inside her mouth. The little girl follows instructions and successfully sneaks the pill away. She finally takes the pill before going to bed and begins to zone out again. She even sees a chessboard in the ceiling of her room at one point. Days pass, and her interest in the game grows stronger. She goes down to the basement on a regular basis to watch Mr. Shable play chess by himself. But one day, desperate to learn the game, Beth approaches him and asks him to teach her chess. However, the janitor simply says girls do not play chess. This upsets Beth, but she calms herself and demonstrates how much she's already learned by simply watching his movements from afar. Beth explains how each piece works and even reveals a few tricks. Mr. Shable is impressed, and he finally allows her to play a game. Unsurprisingly, he easily defeats her. Beth starts imagining the chess pieces again that evening, after she eats her vitamin pills. But this time, she'll be able to calculate the movies and practice on her own. Beth continues to play chess against Mr. Shable over the next few days. She learns various strategies and tricks along the way. Beth's chess skills are honed further at night when she reimagines the moves in her ceiling. This eventually leads to a breakthrough when Beth defeats her master, Mr. Shable, for the first time. She gradually begins to outperform him in every game. Shable continues to teach her different chess formations and variations, realizing she might be the real deal. Beth, meanwhile, prepares her green pills for the evening. She even learns the well-known chess move, the Queen's Gambit. Beth goes to the basement as usual one day and finds an unknown man there. Mr. Shable introduces him as Mr. Gans, a chess club member. He's traveled from another city to play with her. Surprisingly, Beth easily defeats him. Her moves clearly impressed him. Mr. Gans asks her where she practices and the little girl replies, I play in my head. Following that, Beth takes on a more difficult task. She uses two separate chess boards to play both Shable and Gans at the same time. Despite the fact that the odds are stacked against her, she wins both games convincingly. Beth is summoned to the warden's office the next morning. When she arrives, she notices Mr. Gans and the warden talking. Every Thursday, Mr. Gans wants Beth to join a chess club at a high school. He wants her to play everyone at the same time. Because there aren't many girls who play chess, this would be a fantastic opportunity for both Beth and the orphanage. Mr. Gans is overjoyed when the warden approves it after giving it some thought. Beth then goes to get her vitamin doses but discovers that the orphanage has changed their pills. This concerns her because she has become addicted to the pills. In desperation, she approaches Jolene and requests some, but the latter informs her that she is only experiencing withdrawal symptoms. The next day, Beth goes to the chess club, but she isn't in a good mood due to the lack of the pills on which she is so reliant. But, as she prepares to leave, Jolene hands her a couple of pills and wishes her luck. Beth soon arrives at the high school, where she encounters a group of chess-playing boys. They are surprised to see a girl and continue to stare at her. Beth is forced to play all of the boys at the same time. A crowd of students gathers as she takes them all on. They are eager to see the girl be humiliated. To everyone's surprise, Beth outplays every single opponent and wins all of the matches in under an hour and 20 minutes. She proudly tells Mr. Shable what happened later. Despite her brilliance, Beth's reliance on vitamin pills forces her to act in a panic. She pretends to go to the bathroom during a movie night, 
but instead breaks into the orphanage pharmacy. She then begins stealing pills and devouring them like candy. She eventually grabs the entire pill jar and walks out. Beth wants to hide it in her room, but she collapses due to vitamin overdose before she can move. When the teachers and students arrive, they catch her in the act. Beth is punished for stealing the vitamin pills in the following scene. She is no longer permitted to play chess at high school as of today. She approaches Mr. Shable, upset, and informs him of her punishment. She then expresses a desire to continue playing chess with him. Jolene and Beth become close friends over time, and they are now the orphanage's eldest children. As Beth gets out of bed one morning, Jolene grabs a cigarette and heads to the balcony. She joins Jolene, and they both notice a car approaching the orphanage grounds. A couple named Mr. and Mrs. Whitley has arrived to adopt a child. Later, the warden summons each and every student to her office, where the Whitleys interview them. Finally, Beth's turn arrives, and she manages to captivate them with her beauty and charm. After the interview, Beth is told to pack her belongings because she has been adopted. This makes her happy, but it also makes her sad because she won't be able to play with Mr. Shable again. Beth arrives at her new home later, and the Whitleys show her around. Beth is astounded by how much space she will have for herself when they take her to her room. The next morning, she awakens to the Wheatleys arguing about work-related issues. Mr. Wheatley is about to depart on a business trip that will last two weeks. We learn that the couple is dissatisfied with their marriage. Beth leaves for her first day of school and begins her life as a typical adolescent. Not surprisingly, she does not fit in with the other girls at school. The majority of them make fun of her poor fashion sense. To make matters worse, Beth discovers that there is no chess club at her new school. Mrs. Wheatley takes Beth shopping the following day. Mrs. Wheatley refuses to buy her one because they are short on money, instead, she wants Beth to start saving from her 40 cents allowance bit by bit so that she can buy one for herself. Mrs. Wheatley asks Beth to get her some cigarettes from the local convenience store one day. Beth obeys the request and goes out to get the cigarettes. However, as she is about to leave the store, she notices a chess-related magazine. However, the store owner does not allow her to read for free, she must purchase it. Beth clearly does not have any money, so she steals the magazine. Mrs. Wheatley returns home and mentions that there isn't enough money to keep the house running until the end of the month. Her husband only gives them $70, which is a pittance. Beth has an idea after hearing her concerns. She wants to compete in a chess tournament, with the winner receiving $100. However, there is a small catch, the entry fee is $5. Beth approaches Mrs. Wheatley and asks for a loan, but she is immediately refused. Beth has no choice but to write a letter to Mr. Shable, requesting $5 to enter the chess tournament. She also mentions that if she wins the tournament, she will repay him twice as much. Mrs. Wheatley asks her to run out for another errand, this time for a prescription, just as she is about to send the letter. Beth agrees once more, and when she receives the pills, she notices that they are the same ones that the orphanage used to provide. Mrs. Wheatley later mentions that it is her tranquility medicine. Beth hands her the pill bottle, but it's only half full because she took the other half for herself. Beth resumes her chess practice in the ceiling now that she has reunited with her vitamin pills. Mr. Shable sends her a letter the next day. He sent her $5, as expected. Beth immediately enters the chess tournament as a result of this. When she arrives at the venue, however, the organizers inform her that there is no women's section. They also mock her and tell her to leave. Beth, on the other hand, is adamant, claiming that no law prohibits a girl from playing chess. Due to her rant, the organizers reluctantly placed her on the beginner's list. Beth's first opponent is a girl, and she easily defeats her. She then watches the state champions play each other. Beth defeats her opponent in the second round and even forces him to resign. She has to play a game against a boy named Towns before the day is over. Because he is a charming man, Beth keeps staring at him throughout the game. This, however, does not distract her from the game, and she easily defeats him. Despite the loss, Towns is impressed with how good she is for her age. When Beth returns home, she finds Mrs. Wheatley's room in shambles. Her husband apparently abandoned her and only informed her over the phone. The following day, Beth returns to the tournament to face her final opponent, state champion Harry Beltic. We learn that Harry is arrogant, he is so confident that he will win the finals that he arrives late in the tournament. When the game begins, Harry immediately takes the initiative by displaying some impressive moves. Feeling the pressure, Beth goes to the bathroom and pops a pill to calm herself down. She then returns with increased confidence and fights hard. 
she eventually defeats Harry and wins the entire tournament. As a result, Beth becomes a sensation in Kentucky's local papers. She wins $100 and takes the money home with her. Mrs. Whitley is delighted, and she begins to recognize Beth's abilities. She had no idea the game could pay so much, it turns out. Mrs. Whitley conducts an Arden the next day and discovers that a chess tournament with a $500 prize fund is about to begin in Cincinnati. She informs Beth, but the latter is concerned that she will miss school. Mrs. Whitley, fortunately, takes care of it by lying to the principal about her daughter's illness. Beth agrees to take part in the chess tournament as a result of this. She then confidently declares that she will win. The following morning, Beth and her mother arrive in Cincinnati for the state tournament. Even in this town, everyone knows who she is. The female genius, as she is known, is a woman of great intelligence. Her first opponent is a nervous player who is well acquainted with her. He admits defeat and wishes her luck before the game even begins. The organizers from the previous tournament also show up to show their support for Beth, as they have now become her number one fan. They are debating whether or not to compete in the US Open. They then discuss the possibility of competing in the Russian tournament. They are skeptical, however, because it is widely assumed that Russians are far superior to Americans at chess. Beth wins the Cincinnati tournament and gives her mother 15% of the prize money as a commission in the following scene. She goes on to win a number of other tournaments across the United States as time goes on. Our chess prodigy is gaining popularity and attracting attention. In her case, she is even interviewed by journalists. Beth revealed in an interview that she discovered chess in the basement of her orphanage. She also claims that a janitor named Mr. Shable taught her some dance moves. Beth also adds that her great chess ability stems from her ability to predict how a game will unfold and thus play the right way to win. Beth arrives in Las Vegas three years later, in 1966. She is now a wealthy woman with the world at her feet. There, she runs into Towns, her charming opponent from Cincinnati. Towns is now a magazine reporter, and he is here to write chess tournament reviews. He wants to write an article about Beth and invites her to his room so he can photograph her for the paper. Beth agrees to accompany him if they play chess after the work is completed. When they arrive, it is obvious that they have some chemistry. They are almost ready to kiss when Town's roommate walks in and ruins the moment. In the following scene, Beth returns to her hotel room and discovers her mother drinking. Grabbing a bottle, Beth discusses her tournament, including her nerves about US champion Benny Watts. He always has a crowd surrounding him and knows how to play. Later that day, Beth runs into Benny, who discusses game strategy with her. Beth made a mistake a few years ago, according to the US champion. He explains that the previous opponent she faced had the potential to beat her. This revelation certainly shakes Beth, and what's more annoying is that Benny deduced her error simply by reading the game report. Beth has to play the final game with Benny the next day. Despite her ability to maintain a cool demeanor, she begins to panic, resulting in her first ever loss. Beth is frustrated by her inability to predict what her opponent intended to do. Despite this, she receives a portion of the prize money. Towns rushes after Beth and her mother as they prepare to leave Las Vegas, telling her that she will have another chance to face Benny in the future. Following that, Beth enrolled in Russian classes to prepare for her chess match against the Soviets. She meets a guy after class who invites her to a party. While smoking weed, the two get to know each other. After a while, Beth calls her mother and informs her that she is partying with college students and will not be returning home. Mrs. Wheatley reminds her to be cautious before hanging up the phone. Beth eventually hooks up with the guy. When she wakes up, she discovers a note in the kitchen and learns that everyone has gone to Cincinnati to see a movie. She is free to stay as long as she wants, according to the note. Beth decides to stay and clean up the entire apartment while drinking some of the leftover alcohol. Beth eventually graduates from high school as time passes. Mrs. Wheatley gets her a bracelet engraved with with love from mother as a gift. The two sit together, Beth preparing for a trip to Mexico City as well as the US Championship. Mrs. Wheatley reveals the real reason she's going to Mexico on the plane. It turns out she has a friend named Manuel in Mexico City, and he'll be waiting for them at the airport. She goes on to say that even though she was already married, they kept in touch. Manuel greets them when they arrive, and he and Mrs. Wheatley have a romantic conversation as they drive around Mexico City. Beth listens awkwardly from the back seat. The big day arrives, and Beth's winning streak continues. While Mrs. Wheatley and Manuel grow closer, Beth begins to worry about having to play against Russian Grandmaster Borgov. Her mother tells her that she does well with intuition and that she should relax. Beth agrees to go out and unwind. 
Mrs. Wheatley is upset the next day because Manuel had to leave for business, so Beth consoles her. The tournament continues, and Beth teams up with a young boy who challenges her at first. The game lasts a long time thanks to their exceptional abilities. They then decide to call it quits for the day. The next day, Beth, in an unusual move, uses distractions to throw the boy off his game. She walks away while waiting for his move, then returns and makes her move, then walks away again. The more she does it, the more irritated the young lad becomes. He finally resigns, it was clearly a lesson taught to Beth by her original teacher, Mr. Shabel, respect the game and resign if it is over. She then discovers her mother performing the piano in front of an audience. When Beth looks at the tournament bracket, she sees that she will face Borgov in the finals. The day has finally arrived, and Beth is patiently waiting for Borgov to play him. Borgov is playing white, and as he makes the first move, it appears that this will be a fantastic match, but it isn't to be. The chess moves slowly back and forth, each player strategizing against the other. Beth fights with everything she has while waiting for her mother, who does not appear on her special day. Beth is irritated by her mother's absence and channels her rage into her gaming, but it doesn't work. Borgov has outplayed her and thrown her off her game. Beth eventually has to resign, and she loses the game. She returns to her hotel room and tells her mother that she couldn't help but feel she'd already lost. Beth was even surprised by Borgov's lack of creativity. However, as she tells her mother this, she notices Mrs. Wheatley is unresponsive. Beth rushes to her bedside to turn on the light. Mrs. Wheatley is dead, she kneels on the floor as the light shines on her mother's face. Mrs. Wheatley is carried out of the hotel on a stretcher in the following scene. Beth is approached by the doctor to inform her of his findings. He believes hepatitis was the cause of death, but an autopsy will confirm his suspicions. The hotel staff assures Beth that they will assist her with anything she requires and that her bill will be paid. She takes a note and asks if she can contact the person listed on it. Later, we see her answering the phone and speaking with Mr. Wheatley about his wife's death. Not surprisingly, he is unconcerned about what happened to Mrs. Wheatley. When Beth tells him she isn't sure where she should be buried, Mr. Wheatley says he doesn't want to get involved and that she can have the house as long as she pays the mortgages. Later, Beth sits by the plane's window, preparing to return home. She notices four men loading a coffin, she knows it's her mother. Elizabeth, overcome with sadness, raises her glass to the empty seat beside her, a farewell toast to her mother. In a flashback, we see Beth as a child, and her biological mother tells her that she does not have to be afraid of loneliness. Beth has returned home following the dramatic events in Mexico. She lives alone in her newly acquired home. For the first time alone, she reflects on her time with Mrs. Wheatley. The phone suddenly rings, it's Harry Beltic, the man Beth defeated in the state championship. He was referring to the idea that after hearing about her defeat against Borgov, he offered to assist her. Beth, who is lonely, agrees and invites him over. Moments later, Harry appears with a box of chess books, complimenting Beth on her appearance and stating that she is no longer the gawky kid who defeated him five years ago. They talk about what happened in her game, and Harry advises her to keep her options open rather than focusing on a single play, which will always result in a loss. Beth decides to play out a scenario using chess, proving Harry's point. She also compliments Harry, saying that something changed about him as well, but she is unable to specify what. Harry reveals it's his teeth, and Beth smiles broadly. He adds that he fixed it a while ago. She agrees with a smile. Harry decides to return to his hotel room, where he is staying temporarily until he can find an apartment. He tells Beth that he'll be back tomorrow with more books before leaving. While he's gone, Beth decides not to go to bed and instead curls up on the sofa to watch the familiar TV chatter that Mrs. Wheatley finds so comforting. The next morning, Harry returns and tells Beth that she needs to put in a lot of effort if she wants to beat Borgov. He tells her a short story about his chess career and explains how Borgov becomes world champion. While walking to the bathroom, Harry notices the vitamin pills in her bathroom and expresses concern. He keeps it quiet for the time being while Beth follows his advice and begins investigating Borgov, learning exactly what the Russian is capable of. As the days pass, the two continue to enjoy each other's company, playing and discussing chess. Every night, Beth reads about Borgov's career, and we see clips of his matches and interviews. Harry reveals that he is leaving his hotel and moving into an apartment. He also needs to look for a part-time job, so he won't be able to visit as frequently as he would like. Beth then invites him to live with her for free. Harry kisses her instinctively. When Beth does not respond, he quickly apologizes. She then tells him she isn't prepared. They eventually get together. 
In bed, Harry questions whether it is better to go to his room or stay with her. He has begun to develop feelings for Beth, but she is unwilling to even consider romance at the moment. The next day, Beth goes to the local store, where she runs into Margaret, one of the high school bullies. She informs Beth that she married shortly after graduating. Beth sarcastically tells her that she enjoys the chess lifestyle and traveling because of the thrill of seeing the boys, she refers to the boys because Margaret used to ask her about it when they were younger. Margaret has a baby, and she appears happy, but the wine bottles under the baby carriage tell us otherwise. That evening, Beth and Harry discuss chess again, but this time we see Harry attempting to confess his feelings for her. He tells her that she is the reason he had his teeth fixed and that he was waiting for her to return, but Beth quickly avoids the topic and changes the subject. Harry simply invites her to another game of chess. In the following game, Beth criticizes his slow playing style, prompting him to dismiss her as too sharp and walk away. Things are clearly tense between them, and Harry eventually packs his belongings and leaves. He needs to start studying as soon as possible. Beth says he has been extremely helpful to her. Harry confesses that he doesn't really love chess as much as he used to do and he's not absorbed in winning all. He gives her one last book before leaving and advises her to take care of herself. The action then shifts to Ohio for the 1967 US Championship. Beth walks into the venue and runs into Benny Watts again. Unlike other sports such as golf or tennis, Benny expresses his thoughts on how they are treated. He likens their setup to that of the Soviet Union. Beth then informs him that she intends to visit the Soviet Union after winning the US Championship. But Benny provokes her, telling her that she must first beat him. The tournament then continues as usual, with both of them crushing their opponents. Benny and Beth play their way into the final together as the days pass. While Benny talks to reporters to boost his ego, Beth continues to read up on tactics in between classes. Benny invites Beth over for a few rounds of speed chess and beers one evening, but she declines. Beth simply wants to study on her own, but her plans do not go as planned. She eventually walks over to get a cup of coffee when Benny approaches her again. He continues to invite her over for a game of speed chess, but this time he is betting $5 per game. Beth doesn't want to waste her time, so she declines the offer once more. Benny, on the other hand, insists on having someone else get her a cup of coffee. They begin to play, and the crowd grows larger with each round. Unfortunately, Beth always loses, forcing her to give him a large sum. The more Beth loses, the more people gather around her. Beth returns to her hotel room, completely agitated and sensitive. She begins to question her abilities. Beth is devastated and ends up sleeping it off. The next day, Beth asks Benny if his intention is to truly humiliate her. He dismisses her question, claiming that she is the best player in the room and that he has always been the best at speed chess. Beth, on the other hand, is humbled by the repeated losses. Benny apologizes for the speed chess gig and admits that he wasn't trying to take advantage of her. He also admits to playing chess with himself in his head. They fight in the final, and she easily beats him in 30 moves with such credibility. Benny and Beth are soon drinking at the bar, and Benny is furious about the quick loss. He consults her on the Moscow Invitational because the winner of the US state championship is usually invited. Beth, it turns out, had no idea she'd been invited to the Moscow Invitational following her victory. Benny then offers to train her because he knows how the Russians play. He then invites her to visit him in New York. Beth eventually accepts his offer after much deliberation. Following that, we will be shown a flashback. Beth's biological mother warns her that men will come into her life to teach her different things, but that none of them will be smarter than she is. She also tells Beth that most people will accept anything just to say they have something. Beth and Benny are currently driving to New York to begin her training. They play chess while driving by reciting notations on their heads. Beth is also continuing her Russian studies while on the road trip. They eventually arrive at Benny's rundown apartment in New York. He lists all of his chess accomplishments. Beth appears surprised by the setting, and it takes her some time to adjust. Benny brings out an air mattress for her and informs her that there is no alcohol in the apartment. Benny and Beth spend the next day intensely practicing chess. They only leave the apartment to get supplies. The majority of their time is spent in front of a chessboard or analyzing famous games. Replaying play after play so Beth can compete against the world's best players, the Soviets. Benny invites some friends over one night and introduces them to Beth. Hilton, Arthur, and Cleo are their names. In the kitchen, Beth quickly becomes acquainted with her female colleague, Cleo. She tells Beth that her friends saved her from committing suicide. After preparing food, 
Benny invites Beth to play with all three of them at the same time, but she has other plans. She wagers $10 each that she will beat all three of them at speed chess. The games begin when Benny agrees. They play three rounds, and she beats all three of them at the same time, over and over. Benny eventually stops the play and tells Beth that she's finally got it. He tells her that no one has ever done anything like that to him in 15 years. Beth claims to be sober, so it must be helping her focus. The following scene shows Beth arriving in Paris in 1967. She attends a conference and responds to questions about Borgov. The press informs Beth that some people believe she is too glamorous to be taken seriously in chess. She responds that it's easier to play chess without the weight of an Adam's apple. Another reporter inquired if she was looking forward to a rematch with Borgov. Beth responds emphatically in the affirmative. She goes on to say that she always watched Borgov's games, particularly their match in Mexico City. Beth will eventually face Borgov in the tournament. Cleo calls her one night while she's in Paris and asks if she'd like one drink. Beth succumbs to the temptation and joins her. The tournament begins, and Beth, as usual, defeats each of her opponents one by one. After a few rounds, the staff approaches her and informs her that her next and final match will be against Borgov. Beth receives a phone call the night before the finals, as she is preparing for her match. Cleo offers Beth a drink because she is also in Paris. She politely declines, but Beth is tempted and eventually succumbs and joins Cleo. Beth revealed after a few drinks that she had fallen in love with Towns. Cleo proposes a toast to unrequited love and then proceeds to entertain the man who had been staring at them for a long time. Beth wakes up in the bath the next morning, takes a pill, and leaves Cleo in her room. After quickly getting ready, she heads down her game with Borgov, realizing she is late for the big day. Beth is obviously still hungover from last night's party. She tries to gain control of her situation, but she deteriorates as the game progresses. Borgov notices that she is constantly thirsty and that she is unprepared. Cleo enters the audience and begins to panic, asking for more water. She was clearly going to lose the game after a few more moves. Beth resigns as a tear falls down her cheek. She walks away without saying anything or showing Borgov any courtesy. Later, Benny calls and invites her to return to New York. Beth, on the other hand, prefers to be alone at the moment. To make matters worse, Beth must go into legal action as soon as she returns home. Mr. Wheatley refused to sign the papers making Beth the legal owner of the house, according to her lawyer. Later, Mr. Wheatley and her attorney arrive to discuss the situation. Beth addresses him directly and tells him to keep his promise because he adopted her. Mr. Wheatley obviously didn't care about her, nor did he care about his wife, Mrs. Wheatley. He admits that he didn't want to adopt her and had only signed the papers to silence Mrs. Wheatley. Now he wants to sell the house, forcing Beth to relocate. Beth offers to buy the house, but she will deduct the cost of burying her adopted mother. Mr. Wheatley reluctantly agrees and storms away. Beth then decides to remodel the house now that it is finally hers. She takes out the old furniture and replaces it with new wallpaper. She eventually receives a letter from the Christian Crusade, a non-profit organization that wants to help her with her financial needs for the Moscow Invitational. Over the phone, Beth and Ben discuss the organization. He tells her that it is the same group that assisted him in Moscow. He instructs her to take the money and attend the competition. Beth, perplexed, asks him why they would spend so much money on her. Benny responds that they want her to beat communists in the name of Jesus. Benny tells Beth on the phone that he misses her and expresses a desire to rekindle their relationship, but Beth does not respond. Beth decides to dine out like she and Mrs. Wheatley used to do for fun and to take her mind off things while preparing for a local tournament. However, what begins as harmless fun ends disastrously. She drinks so much that her trash can is full of empty bottles. Beth is still spending her time at home dancing, drinking, and smoking. She nearly dies after passing out and hitting her head on her coffee table. At the same time, Harry knocks on her door, but no one answers because Beth is still unconscious. Beth hears the phone ring when she comes to her senses. The call is from the local tournament director, who has asked her to arrive early for the tournament tomorrow in order to take photos with the local paper. Beth agrees to arrive early despite the fact that she is a complete mess. The next day, she attends the tournament, where she meets a woman. She's the same girl Beth played her first match in the state championship with. The girl expresses her gratitude to Beth for demonstrating to the world that women can excel at chess. She goes out for a smoke after their conversation and runs into Harry. He confronts Beth, saying he is concerned about her and that she requires assistance. 
He has seen her in the supermarket from the office, where he is the assistant manager, and informs her that she is becoming an alcoholic. He hopes that his father's experience as an alcoholic will enable him to assist her. Harry expresses his desire that Beth not suffer the same fate as his father. When he realizes she isn't listening to him, he wishes her luck and drives away. Beth does not attend the tournament after this and instead returns home. She looks in the mirror and realizes what a shambles she has become. Beth eventually falls asleep and is awoken by a knock on her door. She believes it is Harry, but it is actually her old friend Jolene. The following scene is a flashback in which young Beth and her biological mother travel to her father's new home. Beth's mother begs him for assistance, but he is not pleased to see her and tells her to leave. This brings us up to the time when Beth and her mother were driving down the road just before the horrific accident. Back in the present, Jolene explains why she's there. Mr. Shable has died, and a funeral will be held soon. She wants Beth to come, but she can't help but notice the state of her house. We learn that Jolene is currently studying to be a paralegal, having recovered from her orphanage experience and clearly turned her life around. Beth, on the other hand, realizes she needs to do the same with hers. Later, Jolene inspects the bathroom cabinet and notices the vitamin pills. Beth is addicted to the medication, she realizes. The two set out on a road trip to revisit Beth's old haunts. The first is an old trailer she shared with her birth mother. It's pretty run down, which eventually leads them to the orphanage. Beth decides not to enter the orphanage because flashbacks are too much for her. Instead, she attends Mr. Shable's funeral, where she feels bad about owing him $10 from her first tournament. Beth changes her mind after the service and returns to the home where she spent the majority of her childhood. She walks down the corridor, feeling nostalgic. Miss Deardoff tells her to return to the chapel, and Beth agrees politely and heads down to the basement where Mr. Shable lives. She discovers a large pen-up board with all of her newspaper clippings, pictures, and memories from her childhood. Mr. Shable had compiled a list of all her accomplishments and news stories. She also sees a picture of Mr. Shable and her together, which causes her to snap. Beth regrets not paying her master a visit while he was still alive. She realizes Mr. Shable genuinely cared about her and adored her. It's all too much for Beth to bear, and she sobs in the car with Jolene. Back at home, the Christian crusade comes to see Beth and asks her to make a statement against communism because they believe it spreads atheism. But Beth rejects their beliefs and decides to return the money they've spent on her so far. This means she must manage her own funding for the Moscow trip. With nowhere else to turn, Beth calls Benny and requests money. He's not having it, especially after she ditched him in New York, and eventually tells her not to call again. Beth requires funding quickly, so she contacts authorities and banks, but no one is willing to assist her. Later, while playing squash with Jolene, she confesses that she regrets purchasing the house. Jolene offers to cover Beth's travel expenses. She wants to be there for Beth as if she were family. In 1968, the action shifts to Russia. Beth has State Department security as part of her trip. On the plane, her security lays down the rules, such as reporting anything suspicious and not drinking. Beth continues to mock the complex rules because some of them are illogical. She's even told to stay in her hotel and not speak to anyone else. Beth wins her first game and follows the rules on tournament day. The Russians are surprised to see a woman like her compete in the world championship because no woman has ever played against a man. Beth continues to win games, and the more rounds she wins, the more popular she becomes among the locals, with Beth having to sign numerous autographs. In Russia, she has become a sensation. Beth continues to defeat formidable grandmasters, though one of the games must be postponed due to the late hour. Before going to her room, she sees her latest opponent, Borgov, plotting her demise. Beth practices the plays that night. When the game resumes the next day, she defeats the Grandmaster. The opponent compliments her on being the best chess player he's ever faced. She beats her second opponent as well, but it all adds up to exhaustingly long, mentally taxing games. Beth goes to bed that night and remembers her biological mother calling her the problem. Her mother instructs her to close her eyes as she accelerates the car. Beth then disposes of her vitamin pills by flushing them down the toilet. We learn that she will face the formidable Borgov again in the final. The final day arrives, and all eyes are on Borgov and Beth as they compete on the chessboard with their exceptional chess skills. The crowd is captivated by the game being played out in front of them as the two make their move. Borgov, however, decides to adjourn the meeting halfway through. With the entire world watching, Beth tries to maintain her modesty despite her agent's insistence on speaking to the press. On her way out, 
She mentions Shabel and how influential he has been in her life, and she advises them to print the story. However, just as she is about to leave, a familiar face from the past appears. Towns has arrived. They exchange hugs before discussing their different fates in life. As yet another sign of good news, Harry, Benny, and the rest of the boys phone in from New York to give Beth advice and strategies for defeating Borgov. Beth uses all of the brilliant minds gathered together as she prepares to go in for her big achievement. The final game is played the following day, and it is as tense as ever. Beth takes a deep breath and realizes she no longer needs the pills to harness her power. For the first time, she notices the chessboard on the ceiling without the pills. Borgov requests a draw as they continue to play. The audience believes Beth should settle, but she shakes her head solemnly. For her, the end game is everything. Beth makes her final move and she appears victorious as she realizes what she has just accomplished. Borgo smiles as he looks her in the eyes and says, The game is yours. He resigns, and Beth receives ecstatic applause as the new world champion. Good for you, Crackle. Following this, the victory brings back a wave of publicity to America, and Beth is invited to play chess with the president in the White House. It's significant that she beat the Soviets at their own game. Instead of returning to America, Beth decides to enjoy the bliss she has just discovered. In the final scene, Beth walks among the various chess players in Moscow's park, enjoying the unexpected acclaim she receives from the men and women there. She is encouraged to play chess with the locals, which she gladly accepts. Thanks for watching, and see you in another video.